Netta's Late Late Show. Tonight, I've got an incredible panel with me and my guest host, Michael Evans, there. We're going to be talking about ageism, something that's all around us, affects us all, whether we like it or not. And we've got to ask the question, why is it still such an issue? Uh, we're living longer, we're fitter, we're healthier, but it's still coming into our lives all the time. We're being affected by ageism, we're being discriminated against, and we need to work out how to shift this and make it a non-issue. Can I just introduce this panel to you this evening? We're gonna start at this end. Hi, I'm Maria Aldis. I've been a headhunter for the last 20 years in the city and I've worked in the city for more than 30 years. Um, I had my own business um, set up about 10 years ago, sold that to an American firm two and a half years ago. Um, turning 50 myself and growing up with a lot of my clients and candidates over the years, I see the negative effect of discrimination against ageism for men and women, as well as positive effect of that because people want more women on boards. So I've got some mixed stories on how that has affected that. I'm a mother of a teenager as well, so very aware of how cosmetics and, and that world affects young girls. I look forward to a really engaging chat with everybody this evening. Wonderful. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael. I'm co-hosting with the lovely Pippa, and I'm excited how tonight's going to go. It's a, it's a room full of ladies, so um, <laughs> I'm here to represent, or not. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, hi, I am Sam Davis. I'm a director producer. I've been in the business for about 27 years. Um, so with regards to ageism, I've been through it back on my side, what it is for clients, how it works in the industry. We talk about how it affects us. And because of what we do, um, we are in charge of what people see. We advertise, we create billboards, we speak a language, we do fashion. Are we included? Are we including people? Are we not including people? What is cool? What is not? Are you young? Can you sell? Or are you mature? Do you have experience? I want to talk about all of those things today. I'm excited about it. <laughs> Hi, so my name's Holly Cole Hawkins, and I'm an aesthetic practitioner based on Harley Street. Um, and I guess my perspective is that most of my patients are in the kind of 40 to 60 group. Um, many of them will seek treatment to address some of the issues that they face, stigma that they face um, related to their age and their aged appearance. So um, yeah, hopefully we can have some good chat about mm. people's experiences and, and kind of how my role working in the aesthetic industry, you know, I really think consciously about not perpetuating those stereotypes mm. and, um, and how we can foster kind of a really positive approach to getting older, because it's something to be celebrated, Absolutely. you know, the opposite's not good. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mary Fellows. I'm a creative director and stylist and features writer. I've worked for many different editions of Vogue. I've worked for The Economist. And in the last five years, I decided to focus my career more on dressing what I'd call household name actresses from Hollywood. Uh, my clients in the last few years have included Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Olivia Colman, Downton Abbey's Elizabeth McGovern, Scarlett Johansson, most recently the Bond girls, Anna de Armas and Lashana Lynch. And I've encountered ageism in the fashion industry over the years in terms of the casting choices on the runways, the casting choices of girls in fashion shoots from the model agents themselves. And also when I started dressing Hollywood actresses, the fears they have, understandable fears around what they can wear, what's age appropriate, whether fashion serves them or whether they're not being heard and seeing how vulnerable they are actually just as human beings uh, when they've got to stand naked in front of me and we've got to get dresses on them. So I've got some love-hate relationship issues with um, ageism and fashion, for sure. <laughs> Hi, guys. My name's Donna Eyre. Um, I'm an actress and brand and business advisor. I started my career probably 30-odd years ago on a kids' drama in the northeast of Woo! England called mm. Biker Grove. Yeah. <laughs> um, I then had my little flirtation with pop music. Um, I worked in various live television productions like The Big Breakfast and MTV. Um, and I guess whatever side of the camera I've probably been on it really, um, at all ages and stages in life. I have produced, I've directed, and I've seen how 
women of all ages are viewed on every sort of angle, really. So I'm excited to be here tonight and get stuck into a healthy discussion. Absolutely. Yeah. Hi, I'm Samantha Baines. I am a comedian, wait for the list. <laughs> <laughs> comedian, actress, uh, radio presenter, children's author, oh, dairy intolerant person. <laughs> I have a hearing aid, I'm deaf in one ear, and I knit. So I face <laughs> a lot of ageism because of my love of knitting. Like genuinely, people think I'm an old lady and I really like the smell of lavender. <laughs> so that's what I'm really excited to talk about tonight. Now, there are so many universal struggles that women face. Am I pretty enough? Am I smart enough? Am I young enough? Am I old enough? So the thing that I want to talk to Donna about first is, as an actress, the film industry, TV industry, must be one of the most ageist industries to work it's in. Ruthless. Is it? Ruthless. Have you genuinely found this to be a problem? It is definitely ruthless on all of the uh, categories you've just said, whether it's, you know, are you pretty enough? Are you young enough? Oh, no, you're too old. You know, it's, so it's not a myth. It's not a myth. It's definitely changing. Yeah, thankfully. I mean, I remember one of the first things that somebody ever said to me on set, and I think it was about nine or 10. The director said to me, it's no good being blonde or beautiful. You've got to be able to do this as well. And I was like, oh, oh And you're God. a baby. I was a child. Yeah. So um, you learn to think fast, quickly on your feet. Yes. And then all the years you've been in the industry, How's you're it? now back on the box on the BBC in the split. Everybody. <laughs> How's it changed this time around? Do you think it, but you've got more experience? You can say what you want. You won't take any shit. It's yeah, it's very, very different. Is it? I'm loving it because I'm older. And Yay! yes, I don't take any shit. Um, but also, thankfully, the industry has changed. I think there was definitely a lack of interesting or brilliant roles mm -hmm. for women of a certain age. That much is definitely true. Um, and thankfully now, to be honest, I did not think I would be working at my age because I knew the industry so Isn't that well. crazy? And you're not old, so... I stopped investing into this industry because I just thought, oh, they're going to just toss me aside when I hit a certain age. That was just expected. Wow. So I thought, why would I invest so much time into an industry that's going to spit me out? So I was like, no, I'm not doing it anymore. But what did your agents say about this? Did they encourage it or were they a bit like, oh, yes, Donnie, you're right. Maybe step back for a little while or... No, I just chose to step back. I wanted to make invest in things that were more stable yeah thankfully there's been a huge shift in we are seeing much more female directors and writers Sam! <laughs> which then obviously now has the knock-on effect that thankfully there's lots of great roles coming up for women mm -hmm. of a certain age <laughs> mm -hmm. um and it is definitely that whole conversation is changing and it's it's a very exciting time mm -hmm to be around and it gives me a lot of hope in the industry and the role. As I a viewer, it seems like it's changing for me, but because you're so embedded in the industry, I want to say, is it because the media are portraying it this way or you're genuinely finding it, but you're genuinely finding There's it. There's a shift and it's so exciting to be back in it again. Yay, and the show you just Donna. mentioned, mm. particularly what was so brilliant to be on that show is it had a fantastic female writer, Abby Morgan. It had brilliant female producers, and it's got a really great female-led cast. Yeah. Of course I want to be involved. It was the dream job. Great. Um, and that's what we're seeing more of, and... Did you see, did you watch the Oscars? Oh, you, Rebel Wilson. Right, and the female directors that were for Little Women, did you see that? Greta Gerwig. Yes. yes. I mean, and that to me is, it's so empowering and it makes me wake up every morning and go, yes. Get keep going, again. keep yes. doing, mm -hmm. keep pushing wow. forward, yeah. you know, and you, you just keep, it's so hard for us because we have to fight in the industry against the guys, yep. against the studios, and I'm a black woman at the well, same time, so I have another, you know, hurdle that I have, have you, to go through. Have you through. ever, in your career and being a, a director, I mean, have you ever had a position where a client or, or whoever you're working for has said to you, okay, right, Sam, we, we need we need this, we need that person. And then you've had to go to talent like like a donna mm -hmm. and had to had to um had to had to go back and kind of like give news. Yeah. Have, I you, mean, have you experienced yeah. that? Yes, I have. I, I, more or less every day. But I, I I can remember a couple of really quite strong 
quite big clientele that I've had, and one job in um, specific, um, and they were launching this new campaign, and everybody was European in this campaign. And the company that got the job, I'm a black lady. But when they see my work, they don't know I'm a black lady. Mm -hmm. They think Sam is a white guy. Oh, stop it. Yes. So. I get I emails have, all the time to yeah, Mr. Sam Baines. Yeah, I, I get it all the time, and it's, it's, it's such a fight. But you know what? I do love a challenge, yeah. <laughs> OK? And I also am good at what I do, so in, in the sense that I have worked, I have studied, I've been doing it on... I, I, I just won't give up. It's just part of who I am. Yeah. So therefore, if I am doing the work in terms of producing and directing, I have to include. And I'm, I, I have no problem telling a client if you are not willing to have balls to make a change, you really have to rethink about what your brand is saying, who you're speaking to. Absolutely. Do you find, though, um, I'm going to send this to Maria for a yeah. second, do you mm -hmm. find that men and women are treated differently in an ageist respect in the workplace? Because, mm -hmm. obviously, with your businesses. I, I do, and I think... But there has been a positive change. OK. But I think it's more for the women than the men. Mm -hmm. So, where... The, f the phrase would be that the jobs, especially the board level and C-level roles, right. so you often it's like, it's the grey-haired white men, and my clients will openly say it to me. So now they're saying, particularly some of my US clients, they'll say, Maria, we don't want any more grey-haired white men, we want more females. I've had literally had it put in, email, in emails, we want more females, which is great, and I do, and part of my job is to definitely promote women. I've got big networks of women that I do little events yeah. like this here, and some of my ladies are here tonight. Um, but yeah, there's a positive shift to hire more women. There's a lot of pressure, women on boards, the the F companies have all set a charter for women on boards as well but it's trying to find the women that want to go there because at a certain stage of their career when you're affected by different things in your and life you know they say you peak at 40 and a man peaks at 45 is that still the same in the business workplace i think it seemed like that yeah. but i think there's women that are pushing through those glass ceilings and, and actually getting into because i'm seeing so many more younger cmos cfos mm -hmm. ceos women mm -hmm. who are coming through especially with Anybody now, because, well, anyone could always start a company, right? But I think now we're being pushed forward and pushed up to start our own companies, to be leading CEOs, to have role models. Are you finding that yourself? I think there's definitely a trend in entrepreneurial, can I try and say the word, entrepreneurialism against women and women. Yeah. And, but when I see some of the people are more successful at a later age, they're definitely those entrepreneurs. They've reinvented themselves. Okay. So when you get to that, whether it's a, a woman at 40 or a woman at 45, the more successes I see are the people that change their mindset. So, so or they come back with a different career yes. or just a different mindset. Yeah. Well, I think you have to have the mindset oh. to change career. Yeah, they, yeah. they definitely go together. You yeah. have to be um, Madonna of business. Absolutely. To keep reinventing, reinventing. Yeah. Cones different hair but that's why you do a woman but you do so many things right so you're yeah. you're forever changing all of your avenues to suit you right yeah i've and i found a weird thing about being in business because you know i work with brands and, and things like that as mm -hmm. well um it, especially if they know you as an actor or comedian they think you're silly all the time i was gonna take you you taken less seriously because yeah. you're a comedian yeah, like i haven't got a brain because i'm a comedian like yes yeah, so people assume that i will be funny all the time which obviously i am um, but, um, <laughs> I, I, you know, I also want to say serious things and I'm an ambassador for two hearing loss charities and I, like, talk um, about, you know, the struggles that people face with tinnitus and with hearing loss and, and NHS funding is stopping for hearing aids in some parts of the world and 11 million people in the UK have hearing loss and one in six and we don't talk about it. But people think, because I'm a comedian, I'm just going to come and be silly and be like a clown for a day and not actually have a point of view and opinion. Saying about the hearing aid and, and your deaf experiences, um, that's another ageism thing. You were saying to me earlier that you're not taken seriously because you wear a hearing aid. Like you should, you're too young to wear a hearing aid. Yeah. So I, I was only uh, diagnosed with hearing loss when I was 30, um, and. Uh, it was a complete shock to me because I had no idea. I genuinely thought, this is true, <laughs> I thought I had a spider living in my ear, stay with me. <laughs> because I was hearing like this weird noise and we've all seen those weird YouTube videos where like something crawls out of a human and they go viral. Oh. Yeah, so I genuinely went to my GP and I was like, is there something living in my ear? And she was like, no, phew, let's send you for a hearing test. So I had no idea that I had hearing loss. And, and then I was given, they told me, and I was given all these leaflets and on all the leaflets 
was like gray haired people. <laughs> I was younger than the nurse on the leaflet, who of course was a woman, because men can't be nurses. Um, <laughs> and like, it just felt so isolating and I felt too young. And people even say to me now, you don't look deaf. <laughs> you don't look like you wear a hearing aid. Like, what does that even mean? And so I've weirdly experienced um, ageism in, in a different way of people think because I'm like, you know, in my early 30s. It's gone the opposite and, way. Yes, you've got, you've got and a, I'm silly. A, a you know. youngism. Yeah, they, they, they don't take me seriously in a business Isn't environment. That crazy? And then I smack them. Um, <laughs> that's probably why they don't take me seriously because you shouldn't do that in the workplace. No, but um, I, I feel like I definitely have to prove myself like in a but business environment. But I think we all have to prove ourselves. Like, I don't know about um, perhaps in the, in the fashion industry. I mean, there are these young kids coming up and starting as stylists and everything yeah. else, but now you've hit this point where you are, yeah, influencers, don't get me started. Yeah, yeah. But you, are, you have reached this point where you are one of the leading Hollywood stylists. So has that, co has that come with experience, as in I only feel like I can do this now because I'm of a certain age? Yes, it does. Definitely, I definitely felt that I got better at my job of dressing real women mm. once I understood Because you could relate to them because you were older, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. absolutely, absolutely. And then there have been times when I've said to one of the actors I was working with, I said, look, I've got three things going on. Would you mind my, my assistant came and helped you out that morning? She'd be like, absolutely fine. And then afterwards she said to me, you know what? I don't think she quite understands It made I a feel. difference, yeah. 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 Because so I think it, yeah, an old, that's that's another thing where we're going against, which isn't right either, we're going against mm. a younger person, mm. right? So we don't want to do that either, but I understand yeah. if someone's going to come in and you're dressing Olivia Colman for mm. the Oscars, mm. she doesn't want 22-year-olds. That's where Something it does like, go in the favour yeah. of the older the person. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. You, there's got to be a level of empathy. Yeah. Yeah. I think also the really interesting thing about what's happened in fashion is that um, apart from the youth quake of the 60s when suddenly the miniskirt came in and the haircuts and then punk music and everything else, mm -hmm. apart from that, this is one of the first times that the youth culture has had such a completely marked, polar opposite quality to it than those that came before it. And it's influenced In what fashion. way? What do you mean? Well, if you think about it, like the language that millennials of Generation Y and Z, the language that they speak in terms of whether it's DM language, whether it's the way they communicate all through mobile phones. <laughs> all, all of us here going... We, we all DM too. Okay, let's get it. Mm. We all DM too. But you know what I'm saying? They no, but mine are they, full words. I'm like writing yeah. the whole sentence yeah, yeah. out. And, and that'll be grammar. <laughs> yeah. But they communicate very differently and they think differently. They live their lives through their screens. And... And what's been so interesting is how many big fashion companies have decided that if they don't get that young audience on board now to grow with them and become consumers at a younger and younger age, mm -hmm. they're going to lose them. So you and see these heritage houses doing really like sportswear so and streetwear so that's like they not get them so young. They get them young. They all want yeah. all the get labels. Get them also, yeah. darling, because you can get them cheaper. Yeah. You know? Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can get them cheaper can because. Why pay a mature, experienced person when you can get a young, two young, three people That's a really good point, to do the actually. same job? And it happens all a the time. A couple hundred quid. And until and do it. when the work oh, influencer like, like, gets boring, yeah, we then we're they're going to keep the, doing we that. We customers. Because, and yes, customers. I keep to, they keep talking to me. I say, what do you do? I'm an influencer. Uh. I keep telling them, honey, my cat can influence anybody. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what do you do? It's so important to, that we... Sam's cat is an influencer, though, to be fair. My cat is fierce. He's not <laughs> you know, it's like, we need to be leaders. We, for me, it's like, we can follow what's going on mm -hmm. right, and, and be this Instagram yeah. thing. And when that gets mm. boring, you know, 90s, 2000s, it was the urban scene and everything was cool to be urban. Mm -hmm. yeah? And then when it became boring, now we're influencers and everybody's influencers. But I know a lot of influencers that can't pay rent. Do you think the influencer scene so, will eventually go no, honestly, under? Well, I think it's going to. Yes, yes, of course it can. Of course it can. It's about the narrative. So Sam thinks it will, but you don't. Absolutely, you think it's going to continue to rise. It's just hip at the moment. I think there will be a moment where it goes. Everything evolves. Explodes. It will never be the same. Everything does. Everything sort of rolls on, rolls on, and there's a. Because for me personally, I can't see how it's going to implode. I can't see it because it's just it's just this huge juggernaut. They said the just... same with the news of the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Scrunchies. I think that yeah. 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 But you can't have scrunchies. You can't have said it was so many yeah. things. Scrunchies. But how long can you how long can you go for is the question. Yeah. yeah. So if we're talking about influencer <laughs> Again, I, I do think you've made valid points in terms of there's a youth and there's a culture. But what I also find exciting is that there is another stage of women that have come out as fierce models in their 70s Agreed. and 80s yeah. Agreed. and 90s. Yeah. And I remember when I was casting 20 years ago, mm -hmm. I used to ring up modeling agencies because I wanted to do a shoot with 
mature women, 50s upwards. I wanted limousine, lifestyle, giving it major, <laughs> in those voice, <laughs> in the wits. Hello. And then I rang all these agencies and I said, you know, I would love women 45 upwards. Didn't all have I got it. was, yeah. I mean, they but just now didn't you know those women. Now yeah, yeah. Yeah. But what is yeah. happening, and that's what I'm saying, if we are leaders in our space, mm. we are allowed to change the narrative because we've got the balls and we are not scared to speak. But can mm. I just say as mm. well, though, mm. back to the younger generation, there are some incredibly brilliant and talented Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah, 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 no question. Yeah. And so there is also this platform where there is some... And what impresses me about young girls, mm. and I see a lot of them, mainly mm. in my house, because I have a daughter who's 17 this year, um, but I just think that women today, what I think, you know, and I'd like to think we've all played a collective role in raising these incredibly strong, I mean, when I look at females today who are 15, 16, I mean, obviously not all of them, mm. but there is definitely a sort of stronger voice and they stand up for themselves yeah they're more, yeah, they're more aware more that certain. they can say something if it's not change. right yeah i mean it mm. probably took me to get to say you know my 30s to be able to put my boundaries down like that now they're just like yeah. boom, mm. and they're strong and i mean it's brilliant but it's all come yeah. from social media where there's so much yeah. activism on yeah. these which is a yeah. great and thing they a voice. and they, they know that they can say no community. to this so when i never knew this i was like okay yeah. i'll just do what i'm told and go yeah, along with we it did. we people pleased a yeah. lot. our generation yeah. you know we wouldn't as we know we wouldn't speak out if your employer put his hand on your but arm. the only but as an agent how are well, you how finding you everything it? over the years has everything Thing change as far as how you get your clients work or I think, I think there's um there's room for growth and movement mm -hmm. and change and i think ageism is is an ism and in, in in that word of of its effect and and it's society <laughs> that's created. I, I currently host magic i was about Clive. to pray for <laughs> um at, at the hippodrome in the west end direct <laughs> Um, so it's directed by Channing Tatum, so it's directed by a guy, but the um, creative team is very strongly female, and I collaborated with Channing on the script, um, and I am the oldest woman in, well, I'm one of the only women, but I'm the old, one of the oldest in the cast, and all the guys are younger than me, and I perform with them on stage every evening, Naked. and no, I, t I keep my clothes on, <laughs> but one of them does put his face in my crotch, and I get lifted, and all sorts of things, and <laughs> quite <laughs> I get off on it um, and um, no once you have it every night Actually, you get it's a very good friend of mine's the lead in that so he was a big dancer for um, Manny yeah Sakanika yeah, yeah, yeah he's Amazing. my magic mind. Friend of mine he's yeah. the one who has his face in my crotch <laughs> I mean Sam how do you find the power of dating now well it's an interesting one darling <laughs> how, how long have we got well I mean I have gone out with younger guys but you, you you like a younger gentleman, right? I don't know if I say I like it. It's the point is that they hit on me. They like you very yeah. much. Yeah. Yes. I, I, I can walk the street quite easily and I... I I have so many stories. Uh, we so, need the stories. So it's the, those bosoms, Sam. Well, honey, what can I do? Yeah. You know, it's <laughs> and, like a nice... And your power yeah. as a woman, but those bosoms are great. But it's really interesting because I think... For me, Cougar, I call it five star. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> We have lived a life. Yep. Yeah. We've worked hard to get to where we are. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we know what we want. And yeah. therefore, do we want to share our household? Do we? With the older one who's like a little bit dragged up down the street? I don't know. <laughs> so, you know, no, but I'm not saying it's a bad thing. But all I'm just saying is that we've had to work hard to get to where we are. So when we make choices, and especially when it comes to sensual and sexual choices, yeah the young guy, the cougar thing comes in hand. And do they talk about, well, do you want him because he's younger? Yeah, sometimes. Do you feel uncomfortable? <laughs> do you, do you? <laughs> Absolutely. I like Absolutely. honesty. No, I like and, then, and then when we're done, I will, as I said to you before, I will bring Addison Lee, he can go home <laughs> and we're done. Because there are it other, depends. Other taxis recommend. Well, you know, we're Uber, whatever you want. But what I'm just saying is, is that Sam when you are a cougar, <laughs> when you are a cougar, whatever they want to call it, I call myself five star. Yeah, do, you, um, do you find that term insulting if yeah, someone says you're a cougar? Yeah, yes, it's because it's yeah, the way right. that they say it. And really, cougar, I mean, that's like a man is a predator and he wants to go and hunt a woman, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Why not? Most cougars do not hunt. <laughs>
think people always are quite shocked by me because I have a, I've sort of followed a weird trajectory. Sure, but you're not saying, oh, I'm on a should. countdown. I need to find a man to I have children. I don't feel like that, but I feel so other people feel, like... feel it on yeah. my behalf. But that's, an, that's a pure ageism. Do you not yeah. think that's like shame and fear, which is exactly what all that industry feeds off? I mean, the, the pharmaceuticals even, yeah. and the beauty and industry Holly's makes industry. billions yeah, out of making people feel shamed and feared. Mm. That's what yeah. Holly knows so much about is... It'd be great. Uh, you know, the media and ageism feeding into how we look, how, and, and Holly's getting 20-year-olds coming through her door. Yeah, I mean, that it's it's, it's, really, it's really difficult because... The problem is, is, you know, we've literally evolved to value youth. I mean, you know, from a biological perspective, youth is what we require yeah. to further the human race. Mm. So, you know, we're trying to move against a very, very strong, ingrained... You know, yeah. Deep, yeah, but you go back to like the Grecian thing. era, and they worshipped youth back then. If you yeah. look at those and, images and, and cave paintings, and the beauty that, like? industry does have to take a slight responsibility. Oh my god, so much! Because so I was so having much. this conversation last night with Justine, my facialist, <laughs> as you do, um, and she made a very valid point actually, given what a huge industry the beauty business yeah. is, mm. and I mean it's one of our you know biggest industry. Yeah. She made a very valid point, actually, and I thought it was so true. It's all of the words that are marketed to women, like anti-aging. I am yes. anti. Oh, I am anti, anti-aging. Like anti yeah. Literally, we should be celebrating Is this. It, why would we be anti? Why are we anti-aging, and why yeah. do we want to stop it? A, it's impossible. We're never going to stop ourselves aging. No. And why don't we use more positive words, like yeah. rejuvenation, or yeah. all of these so anti so anti-aging, and I thought that's so interesting. And as a woman in this industry, mm -hmm. I thought, right, I'm not going to promote or support, no. endorse anti-aging products anymore. What I hear in clinic is, yeah. you know, women, mainly women, because men make up a small proportion of my patients, but there are... Actually, there what are proportion men. is it? Okay, so I reckon it's probably about 5 to 7%. And is that your clinic particularly, mm -hmm. or...? So some clinics... so. Men are different, yeah, um, yeah. and you know, if you want to kind of build a male patient base, then everything has to be different. So yeah. men want a different experience. In they general, don't want yeah. flowers, do you know what, Holly? I I, um, I researched something just before n knowing about the show, and in Silicon Valley, you know, m straight men, thirty years old, very highly skilled, you know, tech yeah. geniuses, yeah. are there. They've got they've got they've got a I'd call it an audition. It's an interview. They're corporates. They're yeah. not they're not auditioning like anyone on this panel would do. They're, they're doing a, an interview. They're having injectables ahead of that because they yeah. feel if they don't do that and conform to it, that that's going to put them on a lower yeah, level massively. of going through. Which, totally. don't get me wrong, I've, I've had Botox since my mid-20s, and I'm proud <laughs> to say that. But why do you feel you need to go that early? I mean, that's <laughs> super early. Because I just, it was just so acceptable. Preventative rather than cure yeah. time. Yeah, and I think <laughs> well, that's a really important right. point because actually, you know, the men that we do get coming through, yeah. so, you know, but, the, particularly the straight guys coming are they in, younger coming now than they so ever were um no actually you know i'm thinking of a particular patient who works in the fashion industry who comes in for treatments and mm -hmm. you know he's a straight guy and again that's a little bit rarer in um yeah. in an aesthetic clinic mm -hmm. um you know why are you here well you know i work in the fashion industry and i'm surrounded by really young people and i don't like the fact that i wow. look much older than everyone wow. else and what is normal is being completely warped by social media. Yeah. I mean, what people yeah. think is, I agree is with this. attractive yeah. is completely just twisted well, and horrible. Real. No, yeah. it's not. It's disgusting. There's always been different pressures as well. Obviously, like, now social media is a pressure, but, you know, there was TV that was a big pressure and people were being, you know... When when I was younger and social media wasn't around, I would look at TV and pop stars on TV mm -hmm. who were wearing outfits that weren't comfortable, but they only had to wear them for one song. And I thought, that's what I have to wear and that's yeah. what I have to look like. And before that, you know, there was radio and magazines oh, and exactly pinups. And so I do feel mm. like there's always pressure and, and social media just is the new one. And whilst there's so many bad things about social media and, and you know, you start comparing yourself and... And I know they're thinking of taking away the likes. There are also amazing things about social media, which Agreed. is that nowadays you can you can express yourselves. You know, the Me Too movement, for example. It could never have happened without yeah, social media. Yeah, it could never have happened without no. social media. Mm -hmm. And without, As have many you know, it's given so many people a voice. Yeah. Um, 
and 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 actually that is a great thing about this age that we're in I mean, now. That's a wonderful thing about social media that we can get together on so many topics in different ways across countries and borders yeah. and cultures yeah. and so forth. So we can speak get back one in. language and I think it's a wonderful thing. In terms because of ageism, what, what happens there is, is that people in the press it's about speech, isn't it? So in, in the press, you can get away with so much, but it's regulated. Mm. But within ageism, in, in social media, you can be pulled... And it goes down to... There's this research that I read ahead of the show that the cellular level, the cells within our body are rejuvenated because of what we're experiencing mm -hmm. and the environments. And you're a doctor and I'm certainly not, so please feel <laughs> free to butt in at any point. But if you were, if you were talked at, like my grandma, bless her, before she died, the nurses were lovely, but, you know, they come into the room and they talk... Sort of, How are you today, Mrs? Yeah, treat you like a child. And so, <laughs> you're, and so your cells are down, and so mm. therefore your rejuvenation levels are down, and it affects you mm. on all that level. Mm. And that that goes back to my to, to the to the top point. There, but it's really. it's interesting and also just though because fashion karma. Yeah. You know, yeah, but it's interesting, even like thinking about ageism within a, a medical sphere. You know, there is evidence that suggests that older patients will be offered less radical treatment. So my PhD was head and neck cancer. If you're an older patient who's diagnosed with head and neck cancer, mm -hmm. you are more likely to be offered less invasive. I don't think it matters because of that. So, what that, you go through no, but that when is, you're older, that is what you happens. can't have the same because you can't rejuvenate you can't speak the same. without being mm -hmm. confident. But it's, for yourself but, you know, the same. even medical professionals there is some potentially subconscious ageism going on. There's you know, ageism and in everything, everything that we do. Everything. We should, everything. Yeah, there really is. is. We're not correct. escaping it. This is what happens in life. And do you ever feel like you've got to run with the kids? Or yeah, you... I do. Mm -hmm. There's a whole thing where I'm like, okay, we'll do an exchange here. You come work for me. Yeah. And it's not going to be like a top-down yeah, hierarchical so approach where like, I will tell you to go make tea. Not at all. Yeah. You come and I'll mentor you on how to write a thank you letter, how to conduct business in a smart way, how yeah. to conduct yourself and all the other things that matter. But I'm like, please, will you teach me So you do return? feel <laughs> like you have to tap into the yeah. young generation and I, to but bring I love you it. forward. I learned so much from yeah. these amazing young people who come from yeah. Yeah. Most of them are girls. They're 20 yeah. years old. They're like, and they think it's hysterical. I can't operate TikTok or Instagram stories. <laughs> and then so all we do is laugh about it, but it's wonderful, and they yeah. teach you so much. But yeah. then, like, but also that's a really like, good way of looking at it. It's like it being is. embraced and yeah. embracing mm -hmm. it. Yeah, but I say to them, like, I will, I will help you, and I will teach you. But I said, you better learn to respect What's people. What's TikTok older than you? like? I've been banned from oh it. My God, it's it's, it's, it's been been terrifying. This morning, my daughter is terrifying. Let what is me it? Go on it. It's great. What is it? If I download it, video system, she's going to release a whole lot of stuff on me that I don't want anybody to see. The threat. The threat. That's like a split storyline. She's. She's got an ugly file on me. An <laughs> ugly file. Oh, oh, that is so ugly file. file. That is so. And mean. apparently, oh. it's going straight where it's I don't want to do. If I'm on TikTok oh. or any of her. Oh, that's quite cool. like brilliant. Got yeah, I've yeah, got yeah, to yeah. stay away. There is something that I was super interested in personally talking about. As an older mother myself, I had my last child at 42, and the thing that I really wanted to ask you guys is the pressure on people to have children is it are we able to have children later because i get looked at sometimes and i haven't got makeup on and i'm in my sweats and i definitely look my age and i'm just like i feel quite conscious of it and do you think this is for everybody do you think everybody feels this way or it's acceptable now for parents to be all ages i see a lot of older women in finance who've delayed having kids until later yeah because they focus on their career so a lot of them are having ivf and they've got mm. ivf friends and a lot of those are older women so yeah. in my circle yeah um in women in industry and in the city and and i've got lots of clients in new york as well i know a lot of women have had their kids older mm. because of they put their careers first yeah. Um, and so they're having, and a lot of them have got twins. Because a lot, yeah, I mean, a lot of it is so more acceptable. It's become more than normal. We've got JLo, Cameron Diaz, we've got, you know, all these beautiful older women, and also the bodies of older women. Like, I'm now looking at JLo, who's 52, <laughs> I think. And Jennifer and Aniston. I'm, and Jennifer Aniston, yeah. and, and Jane Dunn. Fonda, and yeah. Laura Dern. And I'm looking at them for my body inspiration, particularly Jennifer Aniston. For me, that's my kind of aesthetic. I'd love to look well, back. Well, you know, I'm an yeah. Angela Bassett girl, you yeah, know, because. Angela she the arms, is right? The arms are amazing, but yeah. That's yes. the thing I've, I've that's so. the thing I'm thinking now <laughs> is that it's not that's the positive side of what we're seeing at the moment. And we're living longer. And we're li we are living longer. So. Living longer, we're working longer. Yes, yeah, so I mean it's not, it's not all bad. And I don't think that is tokenism that 
People magazine in the States has got J-Lo on the cover every week because of her body and her experience and her... Relative to life. It, yeah. She is like, relative so, and that can make money off it. You know, that's as simple as that. Yeah. But but let's like, not forget, but she's also being celebrated because she looks young for yeah, 50. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Society well, think, is to blame for the isms no, that we're but, talking but, about. But, what, I get a it's little bit tired isms. of all of that too. Still Listen, live in the wild. Yeah. 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 Forget what, it all. I'm, what I'm trying to say is, we can talk about society, but we are society. So yeah, what I keep creative. telling you is that we can make a change every day. We don't believe I, it. I, I, we need to be we responsible. Don't believe it the media well, don't know. Media. I am part of the media. <laughs> right now, you are the part of the media. You can change the narrative. You can speak a language, and the more often you say it, the better and more we believe it. But That's if you true. tell somebody they're crap over and over again, they're, they're going to believe, believe they're crap. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. if you tell somebody that you can wake up in the morning, <laughs> open a business, get some balls, have your own radio station, if we didn't have that, we would not be sitting here today. So we need to wake yeah, up right. and right. right. so over it. Let's you go. Know. Woo! That's society. We are society. <laughs> On that incredible note, Good can night. I just say thank you to all of the panellists that joined us tonight. Thank you so much. To my co-host, Michael Evans. And the crew that made it all happen. Thank you so much for coming. Any Sam fan club members, she's here for you. Yeah. She's here for you.